Hi, everyone. So we are here for our first Titan HQ MSP roundtable. And I am joined by my co-host, Jeff Benedetti, VP of Sales, and Treva Stankhard from Marketing. And we're going to get started here. And Treva, we are going to pull everyone up into the active room with us because we're going to do a roundtable and we're all going to share equally and contribute. So I'd like to introduce myself real quick and talk about why I'm here at Titan HQ and what I can do for MSPs out there in the channel. So I am a former MSP owner. I owned an MSP in the Washington DC area for 15 years. I then took a couple years off and then I went to work for Axiant and then Ninja One. And then I came over to Titan HQ just 10 weeks ago because I was very excited to be a part of the team here with their new MSP first strategy in North America, where we are coming and going to lots of shows and doing all kinds of things for our partners with partner programs and marketing portals. And this was a really exciting time to be a part of the team at Titan HQ. I'm gonna hand it off to Jeff Benedetti and he can tell you a little more himself and his role in the company. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks for that, Tom. Um, Jeff Benedetti here, a pleasure to see everyone on. Treva, we're gonna share the, um, the screen uh, to get everyone up up. On, yeah, I'm on just um, I'm inviting everyone up individually. So once, I'm, okay, once I invite you to become a panelist, just turn your camera on and join us. Appreciate it. Appreciate Don't be shy. It. Yeah. yeah, say hi. Yeah, no, appreciate it. So uh, I've been in working with MSPs for close to 10 years. Um, worked for Datto and worked for Scout Cybersecurity, which is an MSP uh, SOC and SIM provider. And uh, really excited to be here at Titan HQ. We brought some great MSP talent together along with, um, you know, a team that's here to support along with a product and a platform. So excited about that as well. Um, the reason why we're scheduling or we scheduled this roundtable is we really wanna meet our partners uh, and have an open forum, learn about what's working well in your business and additionally touch on some key topics because we're looking for feedback and always looking to get better. So um, as Trevo invites everyone up, I think it'd be cool if we just went around the horn and did some intros. Does that work for you, Tom? Yeah, real quick. Um... Treva, can you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick and what you do for the company? Sure, yeah. Um, just a quick introduction. So yeah, I'm Treva. I'm here in marketing um, at Titan HQ, and I look after um, all the events and all the content here at Titan HQ. Um, so I'm in the background of this webinar, get everything all sorted. So uh, if any questions throughout, just give me a message and um, I'll be looking after everything. So yeah, just um, if you could turn on your cameras, I'm not sure how many, I should allow everyone to turn them on, but um, hopefully as you're talking, you'll uh, come up on screen. And uh, you know, I'm really excited Alexandra has joined us because we had a great connection earlier this year and I invited her last week to come up here because she has a really interesting experience that I think is really unique and she can share with others on this call. Alexandra? Yeah. You're self muted. All right, don't quite have her yet. Maybe. Um, we don't have you yet, but what we'll do is we'll go to Jody, and as Alexandra figures that out, we'll come back to her. Jody, would you like to introduce yourself? I wasn't expecting to talk. I was listening. Um, Jody Lemery, Operations Manager at JP Merck. Uh, they're pro primarily in the Boston area. I just happen to work remotely from North Carolina. Uh, we're a new uh, partner. We just uh, onboarded Web Titan and we're looking as Ben Titan. Great to hear. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I hear uh, that uh, Matthew, Matthew Fox is somewhere in the background. Is he going to pop on here and join us? Alexander, did you uh, happen to figure that out? Yeah, I am unmuted. I, I couldn't unmute myself. It was muted by the organizer, so it took oh, a while. Sorry about that. Finally, I was able to do it, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, my name is Alexander Putman, and it, as Tom says, we have crossed paths before here. Um, I actually started out my career at IBM, worked there for 14 years, did a lot of um, high-end um, web-enabled secure um, supply chain management with DARPA projects in, in the early 90s. And then eventually left and with a, a, a my business partner, we formed our own MSP and got into, really turned it into more of an MSSP. So we owned and operated that for 24 years and I just sold that last year 
to a private equity firm out of New York City. So that was kind of exciting. And then kind of moving on to other things here. So right now I have started another company, uh, an LLC for just providing consulting and other services. And um, we had incorporated Actifile, which is a, a data um, security risk platform and protection mitigation platform. So in our tool set, and they had approached me to become a product advocate for them. So that's where I crossed roads with, awesome. with Tom. And um, and we've used a whole bunch of those products out there that you guys talked about, Axiant and Datto. And <laughs> so I've been through a whole bunch of them. So I have a lot of different perspectives software development originally from college, as well as project management, MSP experience, and uh, some uh, and quite a bit of cybersecurity work. So it's great. I'm happy to be here. Thank great you. Great background. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, the, you're in the right place to talk about security. So we appreciate you joining today, both you and Jody. That's well, sure. great to meet you guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a pleasure. So I'd like to get into some of the, uh, to, some of the is goals there, of the round table. Just really, is there anyone else on, Treva? Um, so I've sent everyone a um, camera request. So if you want to accept, um, you can welcome to come up now. Yeah. I'll just send Definitely. them again. For those that were that are in the, I guess, the waiting room, the goal of this is to, for it to be interactive, for us to discuss topics that pertain to the MSP market, along with, you know, once again, trying to learn as much as possible to make our partner and technology uh, experience the best, so. Yeah, so we'd love to have you come on with us. Um, if you can't for some reason, throw something in the chat. If you're having a problem getting on in some way, Shreve is there to help you out as well. You can directly chat with her. But I mean, yeah, the goals of this are, we're gonna do this every month. And so we're gonna do it again next month on, what do we decide on, the 23rd? So I'd just like to put that out there for everyone. The, no, the 24th, Wednesday, the 24th of August, and every month we're going to do this. We're going to have some topics, but this is also going to be an open forum where everyone can come on here. It's going to be an emphasis on MSP owners and employees at MSPs, but also we're going to have a few select people that are vendors or people like Alexandra who have who have been on both sides of it. That's appealing to us too. We want to talk about what you're facing in the channel, what's important to you, and what you want to get out of this group. That's a big thing for us. I know what I want to get out of it is we have all kinds of MSP first initiatives at Titan HQ. And one of those is the partner program and our sales enablement and marketing portal. And I want to put that in front of people and get them using it. And I want to hear feedback, even on this forum, of what you think of our tools, what you think of that program in particular that we're putting out there. Because my role at Titan HQ is to help MSPs grow their businesses. Uh, just in case, so um, sorry, just before you get started, just in case you want to come on and chat and you don't have a web camera that's working, just pop on anyway. You should be able to unmute yourself, um, yourself and come on and, and give yourself an introduction. So, uh, Jeff, did you want to get into, we had uh, learned from MSPs, good and bad, kind of, yeah. like, it's kind of like where we are now. Yeah, no, definitely. So there's been a lot of exciting things here happening here at Titan HQ. Um, which we'll get into in a little bit, but I really, I, I, the, once again, the goal here, and I hope we can get the others on, is to have an open discussion around certain topics pertaining to MSPs and MSSPs. Um, specifically, we're actually looking at our pricing model. We want to make sure it's applicable and um, and relates well to the MSP space. Um, right now, we charge per user, um, but um, I guess really opening it up and trying to learn about how maybe Jody, Alexandria. Um, or the others on the call, how you go about pricing and packaging your services when you go direct to customers and, and ultimately what you look for in a technology partner like Titan HQ when you're going out to uh, look at different vendors, what pricing and packaging does look like. So, Yeah, I think, I think Jeff, that's great. And Alexander, you come to mind immediately as, as first on that because you've packaged security products up before. And what I'm finding is we've got a situation where there's so many different security products, so many vendors, you're often taking a piece from different ones. How do you put these things together and, and then communicate the value of that to a prospect or an existing client? Well, I definitely do think it, the packaging it is the best option, especially since there is a big difference in sort of licensing uh, price points. So you can take a lower cost a license for, for one product, a higher cost license for another, put them together, come up with a decent size 
cost for a package, but now you've got a whole bunch of things in it. So it really presents the value for it. You know, it really just shows that. And, you know, the people can go about it different ways. And some of these products kind of cross lines. There's certainly a difference between security and compliance. So, you know, you may want to make the split that way. Some of them will kind of cross over for both, but um, I like to kind of look at it too, that says, even if there's a product that I think is really great for compliance purposes, you know, is it just something that should be part of a base security package for anybody, regardless of whether they have any industry compliance requirements? Because that is so important these days. It's, it's not an optional thing anymore, right? It's really something that everybody's got to plan on. Yeah, you know, I think that's a great point. Maybe you could help us break that down a little more. When I think of compliance, I think about things. I did a lot of law firm networks and some financial organizations and medical. And then I found like I had to look for specific products to fit the compliance part. But ideally, I wanted to find a product that I could both compliance and provide the needed security for other ones too. And so what does that look like when you're trying to try, try to shop for those kind of things and bundle them? Well, I think there's some sort of just fundamental things. One way I presented it to one of our clients, they were um, uh, like a, um, a home for people that needed, they were a homeless shelter, right? So that they also dealt with a lot of medical people and they knew they need, or medical issues for those people. They knew they needed to be HIPAA compliant, but they also knew they just couldn't just dive into that. So part of it was just kind of taking out some of those things that are in the compliance framework that you know they're going to have to have in order to even get to be 50, 80% compliant. So it was like, all right, well, let's just implement, make sure you've implemented an email encryption system. You'd be surprised how many people don't have email encryption, right? Security awareness training, something you guys are very familiar with, right? That's another thing that absolutely has to be there. MFA across the board, you know, in the old days you had to get an MFA product. Now it's sort of incorporated in almost everything you do. And then the other thing is, is data encryption. Data is that, key piece of the data and with fewer perimeter issues anymore you you can't just protect the perimeter anymore because there is no perimeter you've got to be dealing with the endpoint and the actual true assets of the business which is really the data so if you can put together a package like that it really it fits as a good security suite of tools for anybody and everybody but yet it you know it's going to check off some of those boxes on that compliance prep framework when you if you have to go down that path as well can i share a question on compliance alexandria in regards to the way you package do you have different compliancy packages say a uh, hipaa or nist package or is it more general based on levels of cmmc which is a good framework how do you go about thinking about that as you approach your your customers because it's something we hear about a lot and uh, we There's satisfy a lot, a lot of, of yeah. between them, right? It's some of the NIST frameworks that are just going to give you your basic compliance, and then some of them are going to have some specific things that you need to deal with. You mentioned CMMC, right? I mean, you're most a lot of people are not going to have to deal with that, but if you're dealing with government contracts, DOD or anything, then yes, you will. Uh, and that's all evolving. But my biggest advice to somebody is if, as an MSP, security is obviously paramount. You guys offer a lot of those tool sets. Compliance is also going to be paramount for anybody with those industry regulations. So, you know, you need to be doing the right thing for your clients and making sure you, if you know that they should be compliant, that you're getting them on that path. And if you don't do it, another MSP is going to. But yeah. everybody <laughs> can't be yeah. an expert at everything. So don't try to be, don't try to go it alone. There are companies out there that specialize in compliance and they know all of those controls for each one of those different ones. They know that the, you know, this NIST framework is going to be common across all of them. And then you got to add this for, for this one or add that for this one. So rely on those companies. They'll work with you as the MSP to do that assessment. In my view, it's also a third party independent view of the situation. It's not you going to your client saying, I want you to give me more money because I think you need to do this, right? It's a third party independent company coming, you have to do this. There's no choice, you have to do it. And then you end up with the remediation work. So you you end up with the ongoing relationship, you end up with the work that you have the strengths to do, but you brought in the experts who really will do right by the client. And I think that's important to keep in mind. That's, that's, that's some really valuable information. Um, and once again, this is a two way street. So we're trying to learn and share knowledge just as much. Um, 
So we do have some people online that can't join on the camera, just got a note. And, and I want to make sure we're able to answer any questions or build in any commentary from them. Um, we're going to change the platform next time. So it's going to be uh, more inclusive, if you will. Um, but between now and then, we're going to work with what we have here. Go to, we should probably do a poll who likes uh, GoToMeeting versus Zoom or, or Teams. So I know how I'd answer that. Um, well, I guess, well, treat, uh, go ahead. I would say, I, I'm fine. If people, if people don't have a cam but have a mic, Jump on. We want to hear your answers. And uh, that's fine. This is our first time out. So that's great. But I actually wanted to hit Jody up and see, Jody, what did you think about what Alexander just said and kind of this bundling, pricing, you know, compliance all around security products? Yeah, that was a very well thought out answer. Obviously, you have a lot of experience in that. Um, we don't have clients that have particular compliance requirements at this time. So that hasn't been a focus of ours. Um, we know that that's out there and it, it's, it's going to come across our doorstep one of these days. Um, but as far as packaging, we have a complete IT department. So there's not line items for web filtering and email filtering and this and this and this and this. It's included in your per user and mm -hmm. user price you get all of these things and we don't name them by brand. We certainly answer the questions when people wanna know, hey, what are you using for this, this, or this? But that gives us the flexibility to change. Like we had Umbrella, there were some problems with it. I didn't like the pricing, the engineer didn't like some of the thing, the, the ways it worked. So we did a search um, and we switched to you guys and it wasn't a big deal because we weren't selling Umbrella. We included right. web filtering in our service so it that's was the easy. yeah so yeah, I agree. It, it was very smooth to switch it out and um just explain You're providing that we, capability what tool you use to provide data which ser service you use you know is going to vary at times as well correct i also heard something in there that's really important to me is that you know these these end user companies end users they they don't know what they need and it's very important to identify that stack based on first of all what you need to protect them and you need to protect your msp as a business because listen they we have big threats out there at the msp level we've seen what's happened in the past couple of years and you also have the threat of insurance issues lawsuits and all that you don't let the client dictate it you decide what they need you bundle it up into way hey we have a full security package that covers your email it covers your dns it gives you security awareness training it does your archiving encrypting all of those things and 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 when they when they try to they try to ask about it and get into it, it the answer needs to be nice but it needs to be directed at we we have to have these things all included in order to service you and provide provide our services to you that's it's big you don't say it's a non-negotiable to me it's a non-negotiable once you decide what security stack is right yeah, that's, I agree. that's the path we were on too. you know, before I sold the business, it was like, here's the minimum amount that I think gives you reasonable security coverage, if you want to be my customer, because otherwise, I'm not taking the risk. And if you as an existing customer don't want to move up to this, you know, it's either you can go find somebody else, or maybe in some cases, you can sign the waiver, this is you're accepting the risk. Yeah, well, that's where we're at. We have a very few legacy clients left, and as their contracts are expiring, they are either moving to a modern contract with the way we do business now, or we're facilitating mm -hmm. finding someone that's more at their price point. You know, we're very happy to help give you some names, do some research, you know, coordinate an offboarding if this mm -hmm. is more the level of service you're looking for, but that's not what we do anymore. Yeah, I, I agree. What do you when you go out to to work with a new potentially new customer? What are you seeing in the market, and and are you getting the opportunity to compare and contrast competitors or your competitors' pricing? And and and, and another question on there: What are they doing around security? I'm just interested in learning more about what you're seeing in the market. I am not the salesperson. Uh, we're not a big, we're not a big organization, so I talk to them all the time. Um, we work together, and I think the biggest thing he sees is people don't understand that 
it's all included thing. Because what about this? What about this? What about this? like? Yep, that like the conversation is this is all in the we have it in our in our slide deck. We have it in our literature. And yeah, but what about this exception? What about that exception? So people aren't understanding that we're not going to say, okay, well, here's the service, and then we're gonna charge you for this and charge you for this and charge you for this and charge you for this. And that's that's the biggest thing he's coming up against that that most of the pitches that our clients are hearing from other people are, well, here's this basic thing, but you can upsell to this, upsell to this, upsell to this. We just have this one premium service that includes all these things. Got it. Yeah, no, I think that's that's definitely the way to go. And worked with thousands of MSPs over the year, and, and that's what we see as well. It's just, it's always a good conversation to have. It's always a good conversation to have. In regards to a la carte, is that something that you're looking at, like you offer to your customers, or is it uh, like different tiers and different waivers based on such said tiers? It's all the same. In fact, we only do projects for managed clients now. So if they someone wants to hire us to overhaul their network but not manage it going forward, we'll give you the names of some excellent competitors that you can contact. Yeah. Um, we're looking for long-term relationships with clients. We're, we're looking to become part of their organization, to be a trusted partner in their organization and not this little add-on thing on the side. Yeah, I know, it's got it. Is it ever different between managed and co-managed? Meaning that do you like have different offerings or different ways to go to market? Can't manage to co-manage? Some clients do have so we have um, an ambulance company for a client and we manage their servers and their network and the radios and they have people that are doing other things. So we just have a very clear division of labor. And so our per seat price is based on how much we're doing if we're not doing everything. Um, but that that's like the the contract we worked out with them. So it's we we do work with internal IT resources as well. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I think, I think that's a great point that you brought up there, Jeff, the difference between managed and co-managed because you walk into a regular managed service situation and you dictate exactly, this is what our offering and this is what you have to sign up for. And you're usually not, you're not wavering much on that. If you go into co-managed, there might be a situation where they have a CTO, they have an IT director, or they just have some support staff, they already have some subscriptions, some services, and so you might, in that case, need to come in and analyze what they have already and figure out where you fit into that with more of a customized offering. So you have yeah. to have some flexibility in that. And often, I also find, you're often working in co-managers with larger entities. And so <clears throat> you need to respect the fact that they are used to buying often services directly. They might have existing contracts under place. So you kind of have to then look at what tools work well in that co-manager situation. And I will tell you one thing that's just to throw real, real quick pitch for I tighten HQ in there. Um, we do have relationships with a lot of businesses, how the company got started. So our products scale very well to these type of entities and co-managed situations. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We There's uh, a lot of different co-managed um, scenarios too, right? And, and one of them that you often will run into is the company that is growing and they may not actually have you know the ctos or the whatever but they're feeling that they need more hands-on support and those actually i loved because it was like we'll help you hire somebody and you hire somebody's going to help them with the desktop support and they're answering the printer questions which we don't want anyway we don't want to waste our time with it and like you said we're managing we have entire control over the servers and the network they can't touch them and we may even still do uh, patch management and some of the other and all the other services for the workstations. But now you've just eliminated a huge chunk of your help desk cost, which is the highest cost. So it's a great scenario, especially if the person is cooperative and they they look to you then for guidance, you know, so. Definitely. So I, I, if it's all right, I'd like to add in like my company view and uh, how we do it. Um, so I work for Paris Consulting. We're a MSP in Midwest uh, mainly. And um, so we really target small to medium businesses usually. 
And we kind of actually do more of the a la carte because um, we kind of have a philosophy of uh, yes, basically. Um, if customers want anything from us, it's basically yes. Uh, anything to do with technology, we try to assist with that. Um, and kind of, as Jody had said, we try to be a partner for, with their business inside of their business, basically. Um, most of the times we don't really have any co-managed, not that we wouldn't do it. Uh, it's just most of the time we're, we're kind of targeting people that don't have the internal funds to have an internal IT or anything like that. Um, so it, all of our customers are just all over the place on what they need. So we found just kind of doing an a la carte is usually the better for us as far as getting customers. And um, we usually try to, I mean, we have a base if we're going to put them on, we, we do like a, like an hourly charge um, and we also have contracts. Um, with the with the contracts, obviously we 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 tell them we have more, I guess, stringent rules on what we're putting in what and what's required to be on that. But um, for the most part, we kind of do a la carte and uh, just try to package things in a way that are beneficial to each specific customer um, and, and their needs because each of them are different in and across so many different uh, just businesses. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jimmy, I have a question on that. Do you have, I always found running my MSP that I needed about a minimum of 10 users in order to make that profit one worthwhile. And then eventually, as I got closer to when I sold my business, I really wasn't taking clients on that were under 20 users. So do you have some minimums in there? And if you do, is there a minimum, along with minimum number of users, is there a minimum contract value before you get to that kind of MSA level? Um, no, actually, I don't think there is at this point. Um, we, we're pretty small in, in terms of staffing. Uh, I mean, we have like, uh, five techs and it's kind of like all hands on deck. Everybody does everything type. That is how we run it. Um, uh, so we, we really don't have any minimums that I'm aware of. Uh, most of the time, the people that would be in that minimum range, if we were to have one, they're, they are not going to be enough. They wouldn't call us enough to have a contract anyways for it to be financially feasible for them to do a contract with us and so let's do, do they'll a, just do one-offs basically do you have a, do you have a set stack and within that do you have a set security stack for your offering um i it not necessarily i mean we kind of have i would say the different levels it's we have a view of like we're not going to tell them what they need to do with their stuff as in, in terms of they have to do, but we do obviously highly recommend. And if they don't want to do something, it's kind of like a waiver thing where they have to sign off that, you know, bearish consulting suggested this and they said no to it. And, uh, but we don't necessarily have, you know, a minimum of what they have to have. Uh, Jody, do you want to, do you want to jump in on this one too? with kind of the questions I just posed. Sure. Um, I've been at JP Merck for two, two and a half years now, uh, but I've heard stories. So the company's been around for almost 18 years, and that was more the way things were in the beginning. And our CEO through, I mean, he worked for MSPs. He did, he like did a lot, he had lots of experience before he started this business. And then over the years of running it, um, just came to the realization that that wasn't what he was comfortable with because it always felt like, first of all, people would wait till the last minute to call you because you're charging by the hour where a problem might've been a 15 minute problem when it first started this little annoying thing and now it's waited and it's a four hour problem to solve or whatever that is. So people were reluctant to do preventive maintenance uh, for an hourly charge, and that didn't sit well with him. And also, there was always the perception that you're recommending this because you're going to upsell and make more money versus you're telling me I need this, it's included, and if I, I, I can say no and sign a waiver, but why would I? It's part of the price you're paying. So it, it took 
without the perception of you're only saying that to charge us more um, that we were running into. Great, I know Treva had a question to pose to the group as well. Yeah, um, it's just so my quest, what my questions are is, how are you all dealing with the ever rising costs associated with your business? <laughs> Not a trick question. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I'll interject here. That's how we ended up with you guys because we we were using Barracuda, this in general. Like for our, we only right now at the moment only have Spam Titan at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at bundling more stuff as far as you know the encrypt and all that. But at the moment, it's only Spam Titan. We moved away from Barracuda just because of cost, and uh, we felt like you guys had what we need and at a better price point than Barracuda. Jeff is smiling on the inside right now. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, I feel like, you know, we're, we're not at the top of the market in regards to price. Actually, no, we're not, but we are from feature parity, functionality, and then R and D we're, we're right there with the Barracudas of the world, if you will. Um, so, you know, all good stuff on that. And it's great to hear, uh, great to hear you say that. Um, I guess, is there anything, it's actually a pretty interesting topic because everything I buy is going up in price. I'm sure your customers and, and prospects or potential customers have seen the same. Are you seeing people be, or businesses becoming more price conscious as it pertains to security or even MSB services cutting back? Just curious. Um, we are, but that's kind of um, a service we provide with our contract customers is, um, we are constantly reviewing ways to get better products and save them money at the same time. Um, I mean, this is just one of the ways that we did it. Uh, it, it. We always are looking at just in general, the internet, like the internet bills, everything. We look at everything that we can to, um, you know, better for both of us as far as us and the customer. And yeah. so that's something we was already doing even before. <laughs> everything got really you know really going up but yeah definitely. Um, that i i don't really get into the purchasing side but from what i've noticed i have not seen much of a difference for us in terms of reluctancy but again i think most of our contract customers know we're on their side to we're trying to find the best thing for them as far as price wise Save like them, yeah got you know. it i'll tell you two things i learned it worked out really well we're these the hard way so when I went hard into managed services, I had all these contracts all of a sudden, and there were mostly one and two year, and then I realized, and they were not auto renewing. And what would happen was I had end up going back to each of these clients and renegotiating after each year or two years it was a hassle. And then I started moving to three years, and then what, but the problem you would find is you get into that second or third year, and you really should have been making more money because prices of everything goes up over time. So what I changed to was I changed to three year auto renewing contracts with an auto escalation of between five and 10% per year. And what it did was I, I basically was covered myself. I didn't have to renegotiate things. I only had to renegotiate if the client wanted to, or if there was a problem, but that way I was protected and it was a lot less legwork. And then when you had, you know, increases in, in inflation or just the, the, the cost of things go up, it was, it, I didn't have to deal with it. And that's something I would recommend to everyone. And uh, it's something that, you know, in later months, I've got a new version. In, in past jobs, I put out a version of a managed service agreement that I created as a template. Um, and I actually have a new version of that I am working on. Unfortunately, I'll be on the road a lot, but my plan is to put that out in the fall and get you guys a managed service agreement that shows whether or not you use my managed service agreement in full or not as a template. If not, I tell people, go in here and get the legal clauses out of it. You can use these things. It'll protect you. And it will make sure you're not stuck in that situation of, of trying to beg a client for more money. Whereas you've told them in the beginning, when you sign up for this, you're going to have to pay me more money in each additional year. And here's why. It's a much easier conversation before it happens than, than trying to do it when a contract's expiring. Well, the other thing, too, is that your biggest cost, you're talking about, you know, the cost going up. Your biggest cost is the labor cost. Oh, so yeah. look at your help desk tickets what kind of support do you have to provide and where are you spending the most time on that and if there's something that's kind of pervasive across the board for people is there something that you can do from a preventative 
manner, either adding another service or another tool or approaching something differently or setting up some automation in your PSA to make sure you're doing certain things, whatever it is, if you can reduce the the calls that are coming in and, and the help desk support, then you're a hell of a lot better off. Definitely. Costs have been very high in my mind um, because in as the head of operations, I don't generate any revenue. I can only save us money. <laughs> so um, making sure that I am subscribed to vendors at the right level, if it's per seat, you know, or does it, when it comes up for renewal, is it accurate? Do we need to adjust up or down? Um, and I have, I, it took me a year and a half to build, but I have this master giant spreadsheet with every vendor, every contract we have, which client has what, because also, you know, line of business things that, you know, and when the, they're coming up for renewal and I get a, hey, 90 day out, notification and then we start looking are we happy with it are we happy with the price the service the, the user interface all the things do we want to look at what the competition is offering so i have a whole folder full of all the emails and sales things from the vendors i really do keep them and go through like oh hey this is up for renewal there are these products to look at because sometimes it has been a year two years three years you know, do we have the best solution? Is it at the right price? Are we keeping it? Do we want to switch? Um, and especially I kind of keep track of the complaints, whether it's from a client or our, our help desk, like, man, this is tough to use, or this is problematic here and there. It might be, well, you have to live with it because these good things outweigh the bad things, or it might be, hey, I can find a different product that does all the good things without the bad problem. And that's how I ended up with you guys. Great answer, Jody. I guess I got a follow-up question for you. I, it sounds to me like are you in something of a sales role to some degree. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. I, it sounds like when, when, you're, when you're talking, when you're talking, you sound you sound like you're pretty adept at sales. But maybe you can still answer the question of how how is the company you work for getting new new clients? What what does that look like? All of our contracts have come from word of mouth. So whether it's a client referring someone or a personal contact of one of our employees we are working with a marketing company we are working with linkedin campaigns and things like that it's in that slowly getting the wheel to turn phase like we're not getting any kind of return on it yet no no hey let's have a meeting let's nothing um everything is is has been word of mouth and uh referrals so far okay great i know we got jimmy on the line still jimmy do you have a you want to tell us about that how you guys are picking up new clients it's honestly actually exactly the same um we <laughs> funny enough just shot our first commercial ever as a oh, company wow, awesome. and the company started with with the owner daniel Parrish in 95 1995 and about 2010 he finally started bringing on people and i came on in 13 and so up until that point, um, it was just word of mouth only. Um, we really, like one of our, and I'm sure everybody says this, but like we really focus on customer satisfaction and like is very important to us um, and it, it a huge driving factor for us. But so, and we've always just went off word of mouth and we just now recently decided that uh, we're gonna start uh, getting our name out there in other mediums um, with geofencing and all that kind of fun stuff. So. Uh, we're awesome. just now starting to do that as well. So, fantastic, fantastic. Um, Tom, do you think it's a good way to segue? We're actually looking for some feedback. We just rolled out a new partner program. Um, we had a webinar with over 200 people. We have thousands of partners throughout the globe, and um, we just launched our really first official partner program. So, I, Tom, do you think it'd be a good time to just get some feedback on that? Yeah, it would. And I don't know, um, Trevor, are you able to pull this document up? For us to look at i actually i'm pretty excited about this because we have uh three shows coming up in the next month and i just finished this uh with the help of our designer killian i don't know he'll may hear this he's fantastic he helped me put together just in a few days our partner program kind of overview document that we're going to have at the booth 
And I encourage anyone who's listening, if you're at Build It Next Week or CompTIA Channel Con or then IT Nation Evolve, we're going to be there. I'd love to talk to you. Like I said, I primarily talk about things like this that are about the MSPs and what we can give back to you. And we've come up with a partner program. And Jeff and I have been working on this a lot over the last two months. And I really like it because I've been a part of partner programs as an MSP and also on the vendor side. And what I see a lot of times they're lacking is it's a lot of stuff on paper that really you can't quantify. You're not getting something back. And I know when Jeff came in, his his whole approach to this was we want to make sure we're giving something to you that you get out of it. Jeff, maybe you want to step in there for a yeah. second. Tell more about the, the, the genesis of that, and then I'll step back in yeah, too. Definitely. So the, the Titan HQ, we're a 150-person company. We've been around for I think close to two decades. Uh, founded in uh, Ireland, Galway, beautiful place. Had the chance to go there a few times this year, and they the business has um, the business has always worked with MSPs, but over the last two years, primarily has have invested heavily in building an MSP platform. So MSP affine all of our products, such as multi tenancy, white labeling, um, and we took it to the next level here with the partner program, where our goal is to not only um, you know, help MSPs as the technology partner, but additionally, we're trying to help MSPs market, sell, and then deliver a user security platform, which is encompasses our five products, uh, email security, web security, uh, security awareness training, um, along with web uh, archiving, and I should know this, uh, encryption. So, uh, yeah, so we're doing a lot for MSPs. We're bringing everything together under one plane of glass, one login, but we're really looking for feedback. We just rolled this out and, you know, nothing's you know set in stone, if you will. So um, you can obviously see this is a you know graphic designer's slide here, but um, really I can just go over what we're trying to do. We created a portal um, that allows our partners to use it as um, marketing automation, uh, sales collateral, um, way to build landing pages, like a lot of robust features that you know uh, could be used as CRM. So there's a lot there that we're giving to our partners for free. And then additionally, we're building tools such as Webinar in a Box, where you have four to five pieces of, uh, of content that you can go out and, and create a webinar in partnership with Tom, thought leaders like Tom, um, and our channel account management team, where we're helping you drive demand top of funnel. Um, and we also have sales strategy playbooks, along with sales training for your, for your uh, go-to-market folks, right? So we can get out there and help you not only sell Titan HQ, but it's more so how do you sell security? How do you go out and market security? And all of our content is based around thought leadership. Um, so we're using that portal to deliver our partner program. And then we have an MSP first channel team, which encompasses a dedicated account manager who, you know, I hired a bunch of folks here that have a lot of MSP experience of one person with 20 years of sales experience directly with MSPs. Um, and we have others that, um, are, you're on Teams. Um, you have others that, uh, saying, you know, uh, you have others oh, that um, on the team that are, they're, they're focused on MSPs. And I would say they're experts in their, in, their, in their industry where they're helping our partners market, sell, and deliver. So uh, like part of the reason why we do these roundtables is we're trying to learn so we can bring the best to our partners. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, there's um, there's a whole team behind them, such as a partner success team, sales engineering team, 24 uh, 24 hour support. Like we're doing a lot to just help our partners and have one place to come for all things end user security. So I guess my question to the group, those on video and those not, when if you can define, maybe take a, like a a canvas, a blank canvas, and define what success would look like, perfection rather would look like from an MSP partner um, or technology partner. Help me understand what that looks like and then if you have any feedback on what we're doing here, um, all ears for sure. Jeff, I, I had a couple of points to you. Go ahead, go ahead, Alexander. No, I was just gonna say, I mean, I think what you're doing in terms of helping with the collateral, uh, you know, the whole, you were just talking about the, uh, the sales strategy playbook and the sales training, not only how to market and sell the security, I think that's all just phenomenal, you know, as well as the, you know, uh, 
the the material just for them to be able to white label and send out and give them guidance. What I'm finding in my current role now, where I'm helping MSPs be successful with this Actifile solution, right? One of the reasons they have me on that is because of my MSP background. And a lot of the time, I will spend the entire hour call just working with them on how to approach a client and how should they sell it and how should they package it and all the business sides of it. So the more help you can provide to them to sell it and market it is just phenomenal. That's a that's a this is fantastic resource to provide. So well done. Okay. Yeah, that's I think great. I think well, the thing the things I'm really excited about this and this is this is kind of my baby here. It's doing this because this is my connection to the channel. As I said, I'm not I'm not in sales. I mean, I do talk sometimes on product, but mainly I talk about partner enablement and what we can do. And what excites me about this is I've seen these programs before and these marketing portals, and they're just kind of dropped on MSPs. Yes. And what, instead, what we're doing is we're saying we have dedicated you know, MSP channel account management team. And Jeff brought these guys over with him, a lot of them from Datto, and they are really pros, and they work hand in hand with me. And what's great about that is they know how the portal works. They know how the partner program works and what you get from it. They're trained up on that, as are the partner success managers. And then it's a lot more than just handing it off to you. If, if we're still building this portal out, but it does have assets in there. You can you can co-brand, you can fully white label if you want, call them whatever you call our products, and then help you in a sales capacity. But then in addition to that, let's say you want to do like a co-branded event. Well, I'm available to you to talk to you about your go-to-market strategy, to talk to you how to be able to utilize these things. We'll even get in there and help you produce an email campaign. We're going to do all these things that allow you to really use the tool and not just leave you hanging. And I think that's the important piece is that you're not just going to be there wondering what to do with it. And then in addition, next year, we're going to start doing MDF funds. We're going to allow applications this year and we'll selectively, if someone has a really good plan for how to use MDF, we will look at that. And if we do MDF, it's likely going to be something we do with you, perhaps even sending me out to speak with you at an event. I've done a lot of these in my past positions. And these are really powerful ways to market your business. So this goes way beyond just a lot of telling you things and doing it. And maybe we can go to the second page tree and kind of show people just overall on the chart what, what you get as a part of this program. So as you see, we've got the portal, the channel account management, success managers, but in particular, in all these things listed, sales and technical training, MDF, and we are going to work towards a lead referral program too for direct leads that come into us. That's coming also. So a lot of these things are, we're just building this out. So if you are a partner and you get into here, be, be patient with us, tell us what you think and understand that this is a process as we build this out around your needs. It's um, it's pretty cool you bring this up. Um, I guess in regards to, a little choppy there, sorry about that. Um, I guess in regards to benefits you've received from other vendors, anyone on the line or on camera, what has been like really stood out to you all? If there's one thing you say, well, that that technology partner, that technology vendor really, really uh, blew me away, if you will. If you help me understand that, that'd be huge because uh, we'd like to replicate that if possible. Honestly, for me, oh, I have nothing. I have nothing <laughs> that I can think of. Of course, I, I'm really a lowly tech guy for the most part. I just recently started doing more. Uh, I became a manager and that kind of stuff. So been lowly guy for a while now but uh nothing that jumps out to me where i'm like you know that was really great and helpful congratulations so, on the promotion yeah thanks yeah that's awesome um i guess if you had a partner that was able to help you not only to deliver a best-in-class product at an awesome you know, price where you can make money uh additionally help you optimize your business with multiple solutions under one umbrella what is it a benefit? Like, do you think you take advantage of something like this? I'm trying to learn, right? It's round table, two way street. Like, would this be helpful for you in your business? I I, I think so. It, it, at the least for me, um, um, I'm I do I do think it'll be really helpful. Um, if if our other partners have provided stuff like this, I've never been aware of it. So they've at the very least haven't been broadcasting it. I would say, um, and I I do think stuff like this will be helpful. Yeah, and that's, I think that's important. You, you see the helpful of it. It's important to understand that don't just sit there and try to figure out yourself. Reach out, 
you know, to your channel account manager or let us know otherwise or let me know and we'll get you assistance with using these resources. Definitely, definitely. I think a next step, what I'd love for, if, if you're all open to it, is we can get you access to the portal. Your channel account manager can reach out, get you access to the portal. And if you're open to taking a portal tour, along with going into the partner program in more detail, I think that'd be awesome too. So is that something anyone, if you guys are open, guys and gals rather, if you're open to? Um, I, for me, yes. Uh, I'll have to talk it over with the, over with the big boss, but uh, initially I'm saying yes. And the big boss. Can me otherwise. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's awesome. a real simple way. I, I see these things used that I like by MMSP. We're going to be putting up in the next week some really cool, like, one-pagers for our products. And we're going to make those so that you can you can white-label and co-brand them. And you can quickly go up there and punch in the name you're calling the product or leave our name on there, like Spam Titan. You can then put your contact information and logo on the bottom. And then what's great is if you're going in out in some sales capacity, you print out a couple of these things, you take them with you. And I'll tell you what, putting paper down in front of someone of, Here's one of the security offerings we have. It goes a long way. People respond to that. It's got your branding all over it. They sit there and, they, and it's one page. It's easy to digest. That's the way I use these things. It's a real simple way to get started. You start to see the power of the marketing portal. And then lately, after that, you move into the webinar in a box, which I know Jeff and I are working on. Jeff, mm -hmm. we're going to get that out probably, um, probably in early September, well, I think, right? Hopefully sooner. Okay. Sure, well, if yeah, you start yeah. on that, we're going to. He and I will get some time on ChannelCon to really uh, to really work that out and, and get that up there. And then email campaigns are coming soon. But like I said, start with baby steps with this thing. Figure out how it works for you and then give us feedback because we, we want to build this out so it works within your environment. Exactly. Exactly. This hour is going by pretty fast, Tom. I know. It's almost done. Yeah, I, I think we're about, we're about at time, time to wrap this up. Is there anything that we can do here? Anyone on the line? Any other comments? We appreciate your time. It's extremely valuable. Um, I've just um, added in a little poll just for the the fun at the end. Just yeah. see uh, what webinar platform everyone prefers. Because I'm not a fan of GoToWebinar, um, evidently, but uh, I'd love to hear what you think. It's not letting me vote. It says organizers and panelists don't vote, and it's not letting me click on anything. Oh, see, that's exactly why I hate go to webinar. All right, so how about we just go verbally? Let's do that. Teams. 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 Zoom is second. <laughs> Teams are Zoom. Well, that's great to know. We've been looking at lots of different platforms, so uh, I I yeah, vote I mean, for I... Teams as well. Yeah, I mean, Crowdcast might work, but Crowdcast only allows six people up at once. So we want to actually, we want to continue this format of where we have everyone come on. And hey, listen, we got we got a few people up this time. We're going to get more people next time. And ideally, I would like to see 15 to 20 of us up, up live, having a, a lively conversation. So I would say to anyone who's tuned in now, if you know someone else that would that likes to come up and talk on these things, we'd love to have you. I understand some people didn't have cameras or are just listening in, that's cool. But if possible, if you can join us next time and jump on live, we really appreciate that. I think yeah, it makes for a great conversation. Definitely, we appreciate everyone's time sure, today. Thank you so much for uh, for joining, definitely. Thank you guys for putting it together. I think it's great yeah. to get uh, people's different perspectives and it's yeah. great for me to hear always, it. Always trying to learn, so appreciate it. All right. Thank uh, you very thanks, much. Everyone. Thanks everyone.